Well, hello. Hello from Mexico. We got to remember over here. Okay. Hello from Mexico. <laughs> We're doing a live sprinkle pod from Mexico. Hi, I'm Guys, Kim. This is my, this is my friend, Kim Troger. Say hey, say hey Hi. to the people. Hey girls, hey people, hey. <laughs> okay, we just hit go live. We're doing this thing. So this is my friend, Kim. We've known each other because our, our daughters go to school together yep. and we are here on spring break in Riviera <laughs> Maya. We're in Mexico. Now I have to tell you, it's funny because I was like, wait, we're in Riviera Maya. What is that, the town? What is that? We don't you know. Said, we don't know. We don't know. Where we're is south. it? South. We're south of Cancun. I'm proud of you. Yeah, I'm proud yeah. of you because I don't know where we are mm -hmm. compared to Cancun. Mm -hmm. But my girlfriend, Janice, she teases me because one time we were going to Mexico. She said, where are you going? I said, Mexico. And she started laughing like, okay, just Mexico. <laughs> like, I don't care. You're going to all of it. There's a palm the whole tree. The thing. Yep. Where the palm tree is. Yep. That's where I'm yep. going. So, <laughs> so we're here. And we're it's here. beautiful. We're here. And you know what? It is so beautiful. We're just looking at the ocean and we're sitting under a palm tree. Mm -hmm. And we really hope, so any of you that are joining us live, if you can just continue to let us know if you can hear us because of the wind noise. I did a couple yeah. sound checks and it was fine. But boy, that wind just picked up. It's, it's beautiful. very windy. It's very windy. It's blowing your Bible. It's blowing my Bible. Yep. Here, here, we'll show you our view. Here's our, <laughs> here is our uh, little set here. Got the Bible, got the ocean. And like all the palm trees. This side of it. I know. It's like a really nice, I like being on this side of it. I know, I know. <laughs> well, you guys, thanks for joining us. So I usually do these on Fridays at seven, but you know what? We're on vacation time. I said, whatever, whatever. <laughs> and so Kim and I were talking the other day. You were the first person that I chatted with here. We were just, we just came up and we were just, we were talking and then I started learning more about your story. Oh, at the airport even. Um, that's what it yeah. was. It was at the yeah, airport. at the airport. Yes, at the airport. We yeah. started chatting, and um, I was learning more about your story. Of course, I knew about your story. And I've had, the, uh, it's been such a blessing to talk to a, a lot of different people here. There was something I told David the next day. I said, you know what? I just, I just felt like um, a little wish of peace that I needed to check in with you and see if you wanted to do a sprinkle pod with me. Mm -hmm. And you said yes <laughs> right away. I did. So are you coming out of your it, comfort zone? Yeah, I am. I'm coming out. This you is do, just right here. You do this I, you, all you, the time. I know. You, you have to come out of it so quickly. <laughs> you have to come out. Of, um, so Marlo, uh, we were chatting at the airport, and then I saw her the next morning at breakfast. And what did we say? I said, life is good. I yes. Said, life is good. Yes. Yes, you did. And then we chatted the next day. Yeah. But anyway, we're here. Yeah, we're here. And thank you so much for you've been sharing more of your story with me. Okay. And you have um, quite the story to tell. Don't we all? We have a lot of stories in our life. Yeah. Um, this, this most recent story, it's, I just really appreciate you bringing me in on it and, um, and sharing with me. But before we go any further, I just want to pray. Thank you. And then I want to share a couple of things and then we'll, we'll get rolling. Um, okay, so Father God, thank you for this time. Thank you for this, um, this, this moment here on the beach with my friend. I know that you, you love her so much. I know that you love every single person that's watching this, whether it's live or in the replay. Lord, thank you so much for your mighty hand in our life. Thank you so much for the fact that we don't have to carry our burdens alone, that we can come to you when we're weary. That even when we're on a beach with palm trees and the ocean and lots of fun, there are things that we can carry in our heart that we take with us when we lay our head on the pillow at the end of the day, Lord. And we need you in all of that. Just thank you for a, the peace that only you can bring us when we're dealing with the things and the trials and the storms in life that, that are bound to happen. So we love you so much. And I'm just so honored to be sitting here with Kim on this, this Friday of Holy Week. Good Friday. And we're going to talk about, about that in a minute. But all that to say, I'm just so thankful for you, for you Lord. I'm thankful for Jesus and the sacrifice so that we can have eternal life we have our salvation because of because of this day because of this season lord thank you for being with him as she shares her story thank you for being in every inch of her story we love you we praise you in jesus name amen amen thank you you can't pray and run the camera <laughs> so <it's, laughs> i don't know where <laughs> the other day at home i was worshiping as i was singing i think i told us on the last one i i said don't close your eyes when you're driving don't you close your eyes. <laughs> Jesus is going to have to take a little extra. Okay, so 
I have to tell you, I'm yeah. so peaceful right now. I was so yeah. nervous before you turned that on. Oh. And I'm I'm not, and a squirrel just like left in front of us and I'm not nervous right now. I might ramble like I am, but no. I don't know. This is, that's what God does. Yeah. yeah. That's why starting with prayer too, it just, just settles us. Yeah. We, we, you know what it is when we refocus on what the, the purpose is. Mm -hmm. It's to share him and his story. So he gives us our tired yet. Yeah, I don't have a tripod, so and I don't even know how much uh, battery I have. Okay, there's a guy walking by to see if we want to buy a henna, but we're not going to buy a henna. We're doing something. Okay, so let's talk about the fact real quick, though, that it's Good Friday. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a. I mean, it's what a. I mean, a, a, what a powerful day. Yes. And we were, a beautiful day. We were talking about. Um, so there's palms above us, mm -hmm. and. Um, we were talking about Hosanna, Hosanna. Remember yes. a few days ago? Hosanna. And when Christ was riding on the donkey on Palm Sunday, and, and, but you have a visual of these palms and how how yes. massive and big they are. Mm -hmm. We And it's funny, too, because you walked up. That's another little, that's its own little God sprinkle. You walked up and you were mentioning these these palms. And I said, I was just sitting here talking to David uh, that morning about about palms and that it's holy week yeah and i had hosanna playing yeah. and a loop in mine and you did too it's such a yeah. beautiful song yeah um but yeah yeah good friday today today is the day that uh jesus was crucified yes. and it is just it's such a as christians um it's, it's such a hard it's such a hard time but mm -hmm. we know that god's the prophecy that that god had was fulfilled yeah. in this week and this weekend and we're just so thankful for him but i don't want to this is this is your time i want to hear from you so we're talking about good friday yeah any, any thoughts oh you um oh so uh hosanna mm -hmm. um god saves us mm -hmm. when they were they were yelling literally god save us mm -hmm. god save us hosanna hosanna mm -hmm. and i've just been thinking about that throughout the week um i don't know it's easter is probably my favorite holiday and I, I don't i don't like to call it a holiday but i'm just gonna say a holiday but it is celebration my favorite season, yes um faith season to celebrate does that is that yes. a good way okay mm -hmm. so um i love it it just i don't i don't know i i um good friday is holy thursday and good friday is um you know it's remembrance um mm -hmm. And then we, you know, in a day we celebrate. Yes, I think it's Yes. Yeah. What? Where would be? I said to David the other day, I don't know where. I, I don't know where I'd be. I mean, I I know I lived my life before without Jesus, but I'm just. I, the season does mean so much to me. Obviously, Christmas too. Since yeah. He was born, but yeah. just the the ability, like you just said, uh, God save us. Uh, it, he saves us from so many things, and and you know, uh, what I love about Jesus is he saves us from. You know, we talk about death versus life, but it's that saving us from the, the death within our spirit yeah. and bringing us back to life. That's why the resurrection is so beautiful for so many reasons, mm -hmm. but bringing uh, he, that God can resurrect the dead. And I, I love it because when we have transformation in our life, it's so indicative of being resurrected from the inside out. And you've had that yes. in your life. You've experienced Yes. Yeah. I've experienced it um, more than once, several times, but I, the circumstances that I've just gone through, even though I've experienced it many times, these most current circumstances, um, yeah. I don't know. It's just, yeah. you're going to continue these, mm -hmm. these cycles through your life. Yeah. And they're, it's, they're all their own yeah. journey. They're all their own. And it, Cause it's like we were talking about, there's not just one season. There's lots of seasons. We go yeah. in and out of, it's our storms, yeah. beautiful seasons or storms. We're either in one going, uh, coming from one in one or going to one. So you, um, so let me, let me take a step back. I did not explain for people that are just seeing this for the first time. Sprinkle Pods is based on a, a book that I was so blessed to be able to write. It's called God Sprinkles. Can I hold it up? Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you. <laughs> there it is. Oh, okay. Look, that's look, good. That's good. We're twinning. <laughs> She's twinning. Oh, I've got all the things. <laughs> yes. Um, but it's on, it's on Amazon. You can find it on Amazon and borrow it from your cousin. I don't care. But the stories are just such a blessing because they're just an example of stories in my life. Uh, but I know that you have stories in your life and that's what Sprinkle Pods is about. So Sprinkle Pods is about taking something that's in the book that speaks to a woman and they say that, oh, that reminds me of something in my life or that spoke to me. 
then we talk about your story. So with that little bit of an intro, you uh, landed on the chapter Run Baby Run. Yep. And there was something that struck you there that... Yes. Do you want me just to start out by telling... You do whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> I was diagnosed with uh, breast invasive breast cancer last May. So almost a year ago. Um, I've had surgery, radiation, and chemo. And I honestly... I can't believe I'm sitting here. I mean, not that I... I just, I'm just amazed that, that I'm sitting on this here. beach, that I'm healthy enough to sit on this beach. You know, I was thinking about that. I saw it's just you really, I just I, like yeah. really am like realizing. Oh uh, yeah. Because when, when we booked this trip a year ago and I was diagnosed, I was like, oh, I, I need a cab. Mm -hmm. like, there's no way I'm going to be able to make it there. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to, you know, I'm, I'm confident in my doctors and the treatment, but I'll still be too sick or. I'll be too weak or I don't know, a lot of different things I was thinking so what and predicting I, and trying to control. So what I'm hearing you say in that is, is uh, it all it's a praise report and it's uh, those little, those little sprinkles, those little yeah. breadcrumbs of gratitude, because when we look at something, a, a monster is what it seems like cancer. You look at it from a broad perspective. And when you, when it comes down to the little things like you're saying, or that are the big things, just being here yeah. is something that you wouldn't have seen and it just yeah. filled you with such gratitude. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of gratitude. Yeah, a lot of gratitude. A lot of gratitude. Uh we can go there's so many directions. I know. Yeah, we could talk about well I mean it could be hours. Yeah. Oh yeah. Look at something that you had written. So if you are if you are watching and you are in a, a battle, you know, with cancer, if you're in a battle of any sort in your life, um I'm praying that we that this that this episode will bring you some hope because that's really what this is designed to do. It's what I love to do. It's what women and their stories are designed to do because of God is to just facilitate hope in your life if you're feeling hopeless. So, okay, so yeah. Arlo had written this chapter, "Run, Baby, Run," and um, hopefully I give a quick synopsis. But you had had a crazy day. Yeah, you were literally running, running, running. Is this the one with the vacuum cleaner? Yeah, the front seat yeah, there. and she's. <laughs> It's also based ends up in the vacuum cleaner shop and her son, it was your son that Aguirre. said, mom, write about this, um, read the book and you'll find out. However, you, this is something you wrote. I may never understand how God does it, but he always meets me where I am. And so let me tell you where I was. This was, um, this was in the winter. This was probably after three chemo infusions and I was very, very sick. And um, I'm going to read this because it'll be hard for me to, to talk through it. But God has always met me where I am. And this particular time, he met me lying on the floor of my bedroom. I was so sick. There was no medicine that could take away the physical pain. Nothing. My, my anti-nausea medication, my mouth sores, my bone aches, my phys nothing, nothing could could take that away from the physical pain. And so my mental pain was then piling on top of my physical pain. And that was starting to overtake me. And it was just too much to bear alone. And I should, I, I would think with my age and, and my walk, I had this almost, I realized at that time, I also had this pride about me that was kind of, that was being revealed that, um, I know God, yet I was still trying to bear that pain alone. Gosh, you know, but I, he's so good. But he knows but God. Us. Yeah, but he's God. so good. Um, and I was just lying on that floor and that was all I could do was just cry out to God. I just, I don't know how I'm going to do this. How do I do this? And so Psalm 23, I told Marlo, when I was diagnosed, uh, Psalm 23 came to mind for me. And then my pastor ended up, ironically enough, praying it over me before I had had surgery in August. And then a good friend of mine had printed a Psalm 23 little card that I could carry with me everywhere I go. Oh, my gosh. And that Psalm 23 kept coming up. I'm going to grab my phone. When you, while you're looking that up, can I ask you a couple yeah. things? Because I just heard so much in what you just said. First of all, you, did you say it was, it was pride? 
Did you say pride? Yes. And tell me, can you expand that a little bit? What were you feeling um, discovering that he already knows I, about us? It's like he, pride it, and control. Uh -huh. I think, and so for me, like control has, I have four kids and that was something that I really had to work on in my life is control and um, that I, which is probably the right adjective. I think it is. What do you, was it the, um, so it was pride that I can fix this. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I can fix this. So control. Not that I didn't depend on God, but it was, was I fully relenting? No, that's what I was discovering. Like, oh, I was just, ju I mean, I couldn't get up off the floor physically. Now I've been there mentally before where I couldn't get out of bed because I had depression or anxiety, but this was like, okay, now I'm, I am struggling mentally, even though I have, I have so much support. I had so much support around me, so many blessings. Um, but nobody can prepare you for being that sick. Like I could never have prepared myself or people telling me that what it would be like. Um, so I was physically sick. That was holding me yeah. captive yeah, and then exactly. mentally sick. Mm -hmm. So you, um, I love, see, that's what I love. And it's, People often say, well, well, does God do things on purpose to hurt us? You know, I, I, I feel, do you, I don't know how you feel. I feel like it was a circumstantial. I was, yeah. these are the circumstances that oh. happened in my life. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So the circumstances and that's exactly it. Yeah. So we are going to have circumstances in yeah. our life and it's those circumstances that he does not waste it. I say it right. all the time. I probably overstated that Romans 8, 28, he will use it for good. Right. So often people say, well, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Does he do something bad? So he, no, it's he, it, what I'm right. hearing you say, when you say pride, the the opposite is, would be the humility. He break, he, he has a way through these challenges mm. to break us down and bring us to our knees in such a beautiful way. Like we do for, yeah. for our kids, we want to teach them things to then land on humility yeah. and surrender. Because it was like what I'm hearing, what I was hearing is, why are you trying to do this alone? Right. I... You can't, I couldn't, I couldn't because I could, maybe I would have a good day. I'm sorry, my foot just went down. <laughs> we are going to stand up and we're going to stand up and we're going to, gonna... we will walk, um, we will not faint, but, but, but we will fall because our foot falls. And I'll tell you, <laughs> you know, I had, I have a very loving, supportive husband. My kids were doing pretty good. I had these great friends and I thought, man, and I was still, I don't know. You know, but anyway, back he to the, brought you to he brought you in the, a loving way. He didn't like, bring me to my yeah, knees, but yeah. I was on. We go to fall to our I, knees, yeah. and he's like, "Let me." That's why we got to go to Psalm twenty-three, yeah. and then I want to talk about Psalm one sixteen because he meets us there, yes. and then he brings us to a place of surrender where then we can fully see the magnitude of his love for us because mm -hmm. he shows us things we could have never seen coming, even in our despair. So. The first verse of Psalm 23 is the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. And, um, and I would read Psalm 23 every day and I have notes and I don't have my Bible here. Mm -hmm. So I wish I could read the notes, but I don't have it. But, um, oh, my camera work. <laughs> got it. There we go. <laughs> so I could just meditate on that first verse because he yeah. is my shepherd yes. and he was shepherding. And I can like mentally picture, and we talk about this all the time, shepherds and, and shepherding, you know, like if you can picture a shepherd guiding you, Yeah. you know, you he didn't have to break my legs and put me over his shoulder, but I mean, I was about as sick as that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, and, you, and you know what I love is what you're saying is, you know, there, I, I know there's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of promises in his word and just that one the Lord is, the word is, is a promise. Mm -hmm. He is our shepherd. We can count on it. We can trust in him, even in our, even yes. in our despair. I didn't mean to interrupt your thought there, but no. And I shall not, I will not, we will not want when we can lamenting. Yeah. Give it to him. Um, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides, beside quiet waters and refreshes my soul. Mm -hmm. And I would just say that over and over and over again to maybe get through an hour or get through a night or get through my next infusion. And I just, it was, you know, like water. 
mm-hmm. you know, food, we can, we can make it many days without, what is it, 14 days or yeah. something without food. Water is four days. Mm-hmm. It's, so it was like water. I was just like everything I was clinging to. I just, an acronym just popped in my head. Oh, pop. It's pop. <laughs> oh wait, 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 wait! Wait, did I, now where did it come from? It was uh, po- oh, point out the promise. Okay. Because you said you would repeat it over and over again. So will you read that again, so yes. And let's point out, pick out the promise. Pop. It's a new acronym. I okay. just made it up. Did you That's, just make it up? I, ju- I, I just made it up. That's Pop. amazing. Pick out the promise. Okay. So let's read it again. And we start with first one. Yes. Okay. Uh, you find one. I'll find one. Let's pick out the promise. Well, we did. The Lord is is my shepherd. I lack nothing. And actually, okay, I lack, and that that's a that's a promise too. Yeah, he will he will meet us like you said. He will make sure there is not. He will turn our lack into abundance. Mm-hmm. He makes me lie down in green pastures. I love that he makes me. Can I say makes? Yeah. Makes is sometimes we need to be made to. Change. That's exactly <laughs> right. He, yeah, yes. he he made me because yeah, I needed it. It's a promise. Um, he refreshes my soul. Refreshes. He guide, refreshes, and he guides me. He guides me. He was guiding me along right paths for his namesake. Mm-hmm. And you just kept repeating that over and over yeah. again. And that that right there is an action step. So mm-hmm. for somebody that's walking through a cancel, cancer battle or any other place of despair, mm-hmm. I mean, that's just, you found that, that comforting just to read that over and over yes. again. Um. Even though, and this is, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will hear no for you are with me. So I hear fear not. I will fear no evil, fear not. Fear not. And that's the other beauty of this, of this weekend is Jesus dying on the cross and being resurrected. Because when we are believers in Jesus, we will, we know we will, we, we know we have our salvation. Mm-hmm. And that, that brings so much peace and just, you know, yep. that promise alone. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I had so much comfort. Um, comfort is like an underestimated, you know, as Americans, we're very comfortable all the time. Mm-hmm. I was very uncomfortable in my journey. <laughs> and so what better to have the Lord comfort you? Well, he takes the, the discomfort. Yeah and yeah is the comforter you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows and i'm going to just keep going surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever so that was what i meditated on and still am meditating on and will continue the rest of my life Mm -hmm. to meditate on um and I'm sorry, there's something's happening with my daughter. Okay. Okay. Well, I will you talk. You keep going. I will talk. Um, let's see here. So, you know, I want to just, oh, you know what would be fun to talk about is that, um, let me know when you're good. I'm almost good. Okay. You keep going. So, uh, last year, so we're at Riviera Maya in Mexico, and we're here because our daughters are both here for their spring break. And so last year we were here, our, our two daughters, um, my my our youngest david and i they're 13 months apart so we were here last year at the exact same time and i ended up meeting with a group of women on this beach it's just the way that god orchestrated it you know there was uh jen bay gina maruskin jennifer boone krista blevins melissa shive <laughs> lisa drew are you good yeah okay and so but i what i did want to talk to you about is at that time um I was, last year last year okay. i was studying for to be uh, on our live barn 45 for the next week. And we were studying Genesis 28. We were doing the whole chapter. Okay. And it was the chapter where Jacob was on, he was, uh, he was on a journey and he, at night, he, he put a stone behind his head, a rock behind his head as his pillow, which I was just saying to somebody last night that indicates, um, oh, the wind is picking up. That indicates his uh, his promises. There's so many beautiful parallels with the with the rock. But sometimes we feel like we're sleeping with the rock behind our head. The other cool thing is Jacob took all these rocks and stacked them up, yeah. and then he anointed them with oil. And Melissa Scheib was the one that said because Melissa. Oh, interesting. Interestingly enough, 
Melissa Scheib, we were talking about how her son Jameson had cancer, mm. has cancer, and uh, her son? and he's actually oh. doing well. Oh. But she was the one that was saying how those rocks are like taking all of our adversity mm -hmm. and stacking them up, and then he anoints them with oil. Yeah. And that, of course, reminded me of Isaiah 61, 3, mm -hmm. which is beauty for ashes. Mm -hmm. He will bring us the peace in, in the morning by, um, you know, anointing the morning with the, uh, oil. So all that to say, it's just funny how life goes full circle. It does. You know, and here we are. Mm -hmm. You and I are having this conversation. Your daughter, she okay? Yeah. Everything good? Okay. Yep. Yep. They yep. just went on a little adventure. Yeah, the adventure. <laughs> David, we are... something just got mixed up with the adventure. I don't know what. Something. I think I got it handled. They're good because mm -hmm. David ended up, they went on a on an adventure uh, exploring some, the cenotes, some yeah. caves. Caves. And so David volunteered to take a yeah. handful. Apparently they wanted to charge group. them a lot more money than they were supposed to. So okay. I don't know, well, but they, they're, yeah. they're going to figure it out. David and Brent and the other parents they've got it yeah there, yeah so here we are yeah um yeah everything's good everything's good okay so marlo had written i already forgot that run baby run he always meets me where i am yes he met me where i was and am and will be mm -hmm. so that was really resonated mm -hmm. and then while you're looking for that i want yeah. to tell you that run baby run um the inspiration for that but i didn't i didn't write the lyrics in there because of just because it's a book and copyright but i can say it here it's based on a song by pat benatar oh uh, no uh it's it's called run between the raindrops okay and it says you gotta run between the raindrops if you want to see the sun run 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 baby run so it just, and that was where you were referring to the rain. Yeah, it was all the rain in our life. And it, yeah. the, the back, there's a prayer where I, I, I bring that to life. And I talk about the, the way that I will never see a rainbow the same way. Right. Rain, rainbow. Bow. Yeah. Yes. But um, that he, he gives us that ability to run between the raindrops. Like you started off so beautifully by saying you found gratitude. We find gratitude by running between the raindrops. We see this. We see the sun. S U N S O N. But you know, there's. Oh, you just made me think of something. Mm -hmm. So when I am on the floor and he's meeting me where I am, um, what was happening was, okay, now I I'm able to see the blessings that are coming because, yes, I'm very sick and I'm, I, also as a woman, I didn't tell you this. As a woman, it took my life away, so I was not able to work anymore. Um, I wasn't able to care for my children. I wasn't able to clean my house. I wasn't able to go grocery shopping. All the things I didn't really like to do anyway, but then I was like, wow, this was kind of like different. Um, I wasn't able to do life at all. And, and that was really hard to let people help me. It was so hard to let people help me. Um, but I started to see the blessings in my friends who organize these meals, these wonderful the meals. Yes. Um, yes. The blessings in the fact that I'm able to get treatment for cancer. I'm able to, to be treated for this disease that I didn't want or ask for, but, mm -hmm. or I'm able to go to a doctor. Um, blessings that I, in my particular circumstance, I was able to take some time off work. I know that's not for every, that doesn't happen for everybody. In my particular situation, I was able to do that, which was a huge blessing. Um, the fact that it's little silly things with certain medication changes or, you know, like just being blessed by a nurse who was so caring and loving and um, yeah, so then all these blessings, I was able to like witness these, these blessings in the midst of the so pain. That it, my question is, the next question would be, women that are walking through this, what would your, uh, that's, that's already perfect advice, it's made me think of it, but what would your, what would your uh, advice right in the top of your head be? Just capturing these blessings, transferring what God wants us uh, the enemy wants us to see as a lie. I that, think the enemy yeah, wants to isolate. Us. I isolate and take you away. And, and so that was, that would that would be one thing I yes, would say is okay. you you want to become isolated. It's you don't want you don't want to become isolated, but it's almost like when a natural tendency to go to isolation and and maybe 
step away from the word or, um, but I mean, finding a, a sisterhood of other Christian women is, mm -hmm. is huge. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? It, it takes a lot too. I mean, it, it, you, you, you said yes. So they were willing to help you. Mm -hmm. And so you're, it was hard. Don't get me wrong. And that was a pride thing too. That was, that, that's you know, right. That goes that's back to what you said. Yeah, the pride, yeah. He, he works it out in us and, mm -hmm. and whatever it takes, you know, he worked out, he's working out. I, I get that too. I fully understand when you, you talk about the pride element because he brings us, he gives that us that sense of humility when we are able to surrender and we can say, okay, I do, I do need, and yeah. thank you. And then we can find the blessing in what comes from that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, there was something else um, that I loved. Oh, um, you sprinkles of truth. Mm -hmm. You refer to Proverbs sixteen nine. In his heart, a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. Yes, that's us, girl. We got this. We're yeah. gonna do the thing. This is what's happening. Here's this see, is how okay, it's gonna go down. I don't understand. Okay, so now I have cancer, and I'm gonna do this and this yes. and all the things, and, and then oh, and and I've got a plan, and then yeah. it's like okay, but he, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's the humility. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I had a plan of what I was. Yeah, I was just yes, yeah, yeah. But I that was again turning that turning that over to the Lord that um, the Lord determines. The Lord determines the, yeah. Lord determines the steps. There's another promise. Yes. He, it's, it's, he's saying, I, it's like, that's it's a like, good one to hang on to. Yeah. It's a good, good one to hang on to. You say the word another children. note. Um, I wrote this down. Can I read this? Please, yes. I don't know if it pertains. I wrote it about an hour ago. Let's see what it says. So you ready? Do it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. In the trials I've experienced prior in my life, I would say that I might have let God take the wheel but I still had a certain amount of control. So the experience or life circumstances I was currently in were so different because I was so sick, so trapped in my body. It was a full surrender. What I mean by that is God carried me. I, I couldn't have done this alone and I cannot survive this. I couldn't survive this physical pain. So it became a daily plea to God, please carry me through this. Just please carry me. And then my sprinkles became little things like oh i can take a sip of coffee today because i don't have mouth sores or yes i have the strength to go see my son play football today maybe for an hour or nurse amy was able to get my IV in today um yeah that's what i wrote it's beautiful and then i wrote you footprints in the sand Tell me. Footprints in the sand. Remember the poem? You know footprints in the oh, sand. I thought you said the prince in the sand. I'm like, wait, wait. <laughs> what, did, what, what prince? And then I wrote under that footprints in the sand. Okay. That must have just dawned on me right after that because he carries you, yeah. you know, in footprints in the sand. I put yes. the poem if you want me to read it. Yes, but I was just going to put some sand in front of us and I realized it's going to blow right Do you want me face. to read footprints Please in the sand? Do. Okay. We're on the sand. One night I dreamed a dream. I was always walking along the beach with my Lord, and we're on a beach right now. We're on a beach. Across a dark sky flashed scenes from my life, and for each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and one to my Lord. After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand, and I noticed that many times along the path of my life, especially at the very lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints, and this really troubled me, so I asked the Lord, Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you would walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. And I don't understand why. When I needed you the most, you would leave me. And he whispered, my precious child, I love you and I will never leave you. Never, ever during your trials and testings. And when you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. And so that whenever I wrote that he was carrying me. Yeah. it is so beautiful and it's so, it's everything that you're saying in this journey it's you're mm -hmm. you've already described it and it's it's in that poem it's so beautiful it reminds me you know one of my favorite psalms is i, I want to uh you may hold this for you oh thanks it's yep well it's it's psalm 116 but it i, I don't want it. let's see let me just find it real quick yeah um oh the wind died yeah. down you can, if you have something to share yeah. while I look this up, go ahead. But, yeah. I'm, I'm not great at impromptu. 
Oh yes, you want to sing a song? Sing a song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A salsa song. Yeah, yeah. I just, I love the. It says Psalm 116 mm -hmm. right in the beginning. It says, "I love the Lord because He hears my voice and my prayer for mercy." And I love this in verse two. It says, "Because He bends down to listen, mm -hmm. I will pray as long as I have breath." It reminds me of the song. Um, with every breath I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I love that song. Yeah, isn't that good? Yeah, it is a good um, He bends down to listen. Yeah. And I, you know, it's just amazing, you know, when you when you, when you look at this entire Bible, I, I talk about it all the time, all this word, you know, it could have, you know, to some it might just seem so intimidating. I know that was me um, when I first would even pick it up. I didn't know where to begin, but it's just story after story after story, Kim, mm -hmm. of things that you're talking about right now. What yeah. you said, he meets us right where we are. Yeah. One of my favorite stories is Hagar, and it's uh, it's about Hagar, and it's in yeah. Genesis. Are you familiar with that story, Hagar? I, she, go ahead. Well, she was um, banished, like sent out, because she was the one, the woman that, uh, when, when God said that um, Abraham and Sarah were going to have he was going to be the father yes. of many nations. Well, they, she was the first wife. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah, they took matters. He, yeah. Sarah said, sleep with my yeah. maidservant. And so he did. And then they had um, Ishmael. Mm -hmm. And so then then, then Sarah eventually was upset and said, she's got to leave. She's yeah. got to go. Mm -hmm. And so she watched, she left. And then Hagar, this is the part I love. She, she weeps under the yep. tree. Yeah. Yep. She's and weeping. Her yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. She's weeping. She's weeping and she's crying out and she's She's got her head down and she's crying and the angel of the Lord, which is depicting you know, Jesus, um, let her know that he saw her. And and then when she opened her eyes, when she opened her eyes, then she could see the well, the spring that was already there. It's not like it be, it was there. And the, and the water in the Bible, you know, with, with Jesus talked to the woman from Samaria, water is the living light that's in us. It's Jesus, it's his promise and it's in us, it's the bubbling spring. And that's what's so beautiful about that analogy is that water was always there. She just didn't see it until she knew that he saw her. Yeah. That reminds me of what you're, what you're experiencing. He sees you, it's your, this, your, your Psalm and it's Psalm 116 that says he will, he listens to you. Yeah. 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 We have to be ready to receive it. That's the humility. Yeah, that's the, yes, that is a humility. Let me see if people have comments here. And if they have a question, do you, let's see. Oh, yeah. Hel right. Are you comfortable answering? Yes. Um, well, but, yeah, okay, Leslie said, are you, are you feel comfortable answering this? Uh, are you still, are you still Fighting. fighting? Can oh, we so, yeah, were talking about that this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, it was so cold out here <laughs> on the beach this morning. We were the first two out here, and we were so cold. We had... We had to go find a sauna. <laughs> so her and I, it's beautiful sunshine. I had a sweatshirt on. We're sitting in a dark sauna trying to get warm. So <laughs> I you were telling you yeah, this. I yeah. have, um, I, I went through my surgery. I went through chemo for a, um, about five months and radiation for six weeks. And right now they would define me as um, cancer free, but I have a DNA test in late spring, early summer. Well, that solidifies everything. I am just overjoyed to hear this yeah. beautiful progress and the, the good news that you've been receiving. And we're just going to, we're going to, we're praying for a victory yes. over this. And, yeah. you know, on the other side of this, Kim, when we were talking about, you know, your hair growing back and all the things. And this is my little, forward. my hat wig. I love it. It's built into my hat. Well, girl, you know, I, you know, <laughs> I'm right with you on the, on the, on the, on the wigs and the uh -huh. hair. We, you know what we need to do? We need to have like a night where you might need to help me learn about my wigs. I, I would love to. Maybe we'll have um, I'll you and Erica over some. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna do that. I've been wanting to do That'd that on really YouTube. Fun. Yeah, because suppose you don't know that's all this hair is not. It's not. Oh, it's not always mine. It depends <laughs> on the day. Um, but I love any sort. Of, you know what I call it? I call it acrylic hair. Oh yeah, because like we have, nails. We have acrylic nails. Yeah, I know. Who says we can't have acrylic yeah. hair? So, um, but you know what? What was I saying about that? Uh, oh, so about your that. hair. So I totally oh, yeah. get it. Do you want to tell the story about, about my hair? The airport or the, oh, talk about oh, the airport. Okay, so we should move. Come over here a little yeah. bit more because um, okay, the, the sun. sun. Yeah, don't mind us. Don't um, mind us for any. Oh yeah, it's just scooch. Oh my gosh, it's so much cooler. Okay, what were we thinking? Okay, for set anybody. Change. Oh, wow. <laughs> set change <laughs> for anybody that's gone through chemo and lost their hair. 
um, another humbling experience. But honestly, I was so sick in the beginning. I didn't even care. I was like, uh, and it's cold in Michigan and we're in Michigan and you wear beanies all day long. And I right. came down here and I was really trying to figure out what am I going to do when I get down the beach? And I have some hair growth. Um, anyway, but I just didn't think too much about it. And we, we fly into Cancun and I have this fun little baseball cap with this, this wig built into it with a little braid and we go through customs and they have to scan your face. You can't, I'm looking at the wrong thing. They have to scan your face. You had to take your hat a little off. bit just because yeah. I, oh, it's, it's like, kind of like a okay, cause I just hold on one sec. Another set change yeah. because we are winging this. We are on the beach and my foot is cramping. <laughs> okay. That's when my foot went Here, up. just lean up, lean up, lean over here. Let's do this. So good. This this is, anyhow, why didn't we do this? And then, I don't know. <laughs> what were we thinking? Oh, we that. So much we better. Were. And so we were winging it. And so can you see me? Okay. And so the little video has to scan your face. And so the nice lady said, oh, you need to take your hat off. And I was like, oh, I can't, I can't take my hat off. And my daughter, my teenage daughter is sitting right there. And then a lot of people, all the people we traveled with are back in line. And I said, oh, no, I can't take my hat off. Yes, you have to take your hat off. And we're not, we're not trying it. In that moment, you're going, I'm not trying to. Yeah, I'm not about to argue with the people in costumes coming in. And I was head. like, I don't get that. Yeah, what do we do? I was like, you don't understand. I finally was like, I don't have hair. And she's like, you you have to take your hat off. And so I pulled my hat off. Mm -hmm. And I was, it was not my favorite thing. And my daughter is, I said, please stand here. And I think, you know, I don't know. She hasn't said, and I probably won't ask if she was a little embarrassed. Um, and then I put my hat back on and I said, that was embarrassing. <laughs> For me, oh. that's how I felt at the time. What a moment for, you know, for her to see and though, I your think, courage yeah. and, and, uh, and that sense of, I mean, you can only feel that and that yeah. sense of humility that you have to experience in that moment. And, you know, But you know what, talking this through, um, and I, I haven't really like come right out and talked about what's happened over the last nine months. Like really, I'm, I might be like stifling it a little bit and it'll come out at times, but, um, but then I'm remembering when I just told you, oh, when I was so sick, my hair loss didn't bother me because that's right. it didn't bother it's me. See, that, yeah, there's a way, that's what I was feeling when you were telling me that story in the sauna is that we get so, I mean, whether it's humbled or reliant, mm -hmm. You you were at first you were you were tried a treatment that was yeah. a cold cap yeah cold cap and it was it ended up being, it's being it, pretty painful, painful yeah but it then, works for people it didn't yeah, work for me yeah but you said that you just get to the point where you're yeah. that's what you're saying it's like I don't I just yeah. you had your friend shave your hair yeah. because you just needed to uh, not deal with one more mm -hmm. thing right yeah you just shave your hair and then I'll I'll tell you too another thing that it just popped in my head is I talk to my daughter a lot about where she finds her identity, especially as a teenage girl and I'll, yeah. I'll run Robin to me, but I push that on my kids so much. Like, know your identity, your identity is found in Christ alone. Yes. This is where your identity is found and this will like serve you well in your life. And I'm telling this to my children and then I'm not telling this to myself. Easy to do. And I was like, what is, where is my identity found? Is it found in my hair? No, I mean, it is you know, something that I wish I had, but it's, it doesn't like identify me. It doesn't say right. who I am as a person. My, you know, that's not where my identity is found. Right. That is so, and, so. and that, see, and that's why, that's what we're saying that he doesn't waste a thing. Yeah. And that message is becoming even stronger. And it's not just words now with yeah. your daughter. Yeah. Not, not that it was just words, but when we tell right. our kids, we try to explain it to them, yeah. but you literally showed her, you didn't, wasn't an example you were searching for, but in that moment, she saw, she saw you in that moment and she watched you walk that out. And she knows that you're, you're fine on the other yeah. side of it. Yeah. And yeah. that you, the way that you've handled it and the lessons that you still teach her in that. Yeah. I have one other thing. Yes. You said something else. You had referred to Pastor Skip, do you yes. remember this? Yeah. Can I read this? Of course. I love Pastor Skip. Can I show this picture of Pastor Skip? Pastor, okay. Pastor Skip Heitzig. Pastor He's Skip. From, 
Albuquerque. Find him on YouTube. I know that Sue Ring watches him now. He, I studied the Bible from 30,000 feet during COVID from cover to cover with him, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Oh. But he is um, on YouTube. Find him. If there's something specific you want to learn about, type his name and then what you want to learn about and he will he'll have a lesson. Okay. This is what, this is uh, Marlowe's quote from Pastor Skip. And this is what he said. Here's how it works. You come to Jesus, you drink the living water, your thirst gets quenched. Christian, if that's where you stop, you've stopped too soon. If you're making it all about me, bless me, fill me, I want to enjoy, I want more, you've got it all wrong. Out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. You have a message to get out. You have others who are lost, who are thirsty. They need to hear it too. Don't be a well, be a hose, be a geyser. That's why I said, okay. But I was so I was so nervous. I'm like, nobody wants to hear anything that I have to say. Like, yes, that's not relevant. But then this, I read this, and then you said, um, well, it's not about us, right? Right. It's about the work he does in us. That is exactly right. Yeah. The story that we, that's what, that, that's the key. That's the key with Sprinkle Paws is mm -hmm. just to tell the story. There are people relating with the story. And then you, you, are, you are sitting here in the sand being a geyser a geyser of your story a geyser of um just in, even in recapping you're being a geyser of his promises a geyser of hope yeah. that you can find you can find joy in the midst of your circumstances yeah. Yeah, you can. and you know i just decide you know over there i love the woman at he the brings well. us joy in the midst of our circumstances he does yes yeah yes she, okay, so like the woman at the well, in her circumstances, she found like pure joy in just experiencing him. But what I love about her is she ran, she ran and said, come and hear about the man who told me everything I've done. She became a geyser. Yeah. She was a geyser. And so, but I want to go back to that about the joy versus uh, happiness. Happiness. Yeah. We talk about that because I, that's one of my favorite things to talk about. And that right there, when we talk about Easter and resurrection and bringing back to life what's dead on the inside of us, that, that topic alone, discovering the difference between joy and happiness will can bring the dead back to life. Yeah. Will you talk about your thoughts on that? Um, you might have to guide me. Yeah. Uh, okay. So happiness, so happiness can be fleeting. Yeah. Fleeting. Ha yeah. Happiness can be fleeting and joy is substantial. Would you say that's true? Joy is it the is, joy of the Lord. Yeah. I don't have the scripture in front of me, but the joy of the Lord, it's it's anchored. Yeah. It's in there. Oh my gosh, anchor. Oh, that's so funny you said that. I was thinking about an anchor last night because Joy loves anchors. Joy right? loves anchors. She loves anchors. And I had bought my friend Karen an anchor for her um house up north in Michigan. And I don't and then I was thinking about the ocean and I was thinking about anchoring and joy is anchored. Yeah, you're, you're anchored in your joy, right? If yes. you find it in the Lord. Yes. Versus, and so that I think you is when you're laying on up. the bathroom floor, which I believe is a country song. Will you keep an eye on this camera and make sure it's on you? Because I'm moving yeah. around. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, the joy, you're anchored in your joy. And so that was laying on the bathroom floor or bedroom yes. floor or whatever floor I was on. For some reason, the floor made me feel better when I was sick. Um, and that's when I'm... Um, praying the psalm or repeating the psalm 23 yes and then i am being reminded of um the blessings that i'm that i've been experiencing through my sickness and that was bringing me joy mm -hmm. it's a joy it's a joy that i was looking for it in hebrews i'm sorry if somebody knows these the exact scripture uh of the anchors in hebrews i know boy, 6 11 but anyway I, the pages are going all over but i so it's just anchoring anchoring in yeah. the joy of the lord that nobody nobody can once it's there it's that wish of peace mm -hmm. that that you know it's a no it's a knowing it's a, it's a peace that you get to call upon versus the happenstance the laying on the floor this is a circumstance this is cancer circumstantial is, yeah yes mm -hmm. and, and we're gonna have so many circumstances in our life that happen to us and i've had many circumstances before this that have yeah, happened to me and other yeah. testimonies. You've got this is not my yeah other testimonies. This isn't your own. Uh, <laughs> we got lots. Of, what what do you want? How, what, I was like, let's just focus on this testimony. Exactly. That, and every so and many. every um and, and the other testimonies part to this that we're not going to get into. Yeah. Um, just, you know, there's joy that's come out of that. And, and so, 
without giving the detail of the other testimonies, the point is there are lots of them. And yeah, just re like stay on that for a second. They were hard. They were trying. I don't even know what they were, but you found joy on the other side. Oh yeah. I found joy. I found mended relationships. It was the biggest one. Mended human relationships. Um, peace. I think it's my go-to. Oh, yeah. else? Doesn't that kind of cover the... It's just... The I heard from yeah. Yeah. He will use it. Yeah. He will use it. Yeah. Um, Darren, I did think of something as you were saying that, and it just escaped me. Uh, how nice and windy it is. We got the background noise back here. It's so nice and windy. Yeah. Let me see what... Okay, so we... Yeah. Oh, we have about 10 more minutes. I just okay. want to make sure my battery lasts. Yes. How are you doing on battery life? I don't know. I can't see. Do we have any questions? Any questions? And you know who any was? Questions? Was the first one to point out the difference between um, joy and happiness was Pastor Skip. Oh, Pastor yeah. Skip did? It, it, what did he say about it? it oh, that's what we were just reading. Was yeah, well, we reading, yeah, of? well, just the, just the happenstance. The happiness is happy yeah. based on happenstance. And it was when he was doing a study of uh, Philippians, okay. which is Paul, written by Paul. Yeah who is, is the, oh my gosh, he's always talking about joy in the Bible. And yeah. Paul wrote his, uh, a lot of the Bible in, in places that were not joyful yeah. at all. So yeah, <laughs> jail is not a jail. joyful, no. that's not a joyful place. No, no. But that's where we find our most, most of our growth, right? It is. Thank you. Thank you, Roz. I, oh, I nice. thought it was six. Uh, you know why? Because I'm picturing Joy's license okay. plate. <laughs> is that her license plate? I have something. I, maybe it's not anymore. She just had one okay. she had a, as an accessory. But okay. Yeah, Hebrews 6, 19. Thank you so much. Does she have um, me to pull up on my phone? I don't know what I did with anything. So anyway, hold this okay. yeah, so we have a few more minutes. You guys have any questions or if there's anything else that you want to share? I don't know. Yeah. I don't think so. I had so many. I, I love this. This sprinkle, God sprinkles. So uh, I'm looking for them everywhere. They, they are. They are everywhere. They are everywhere. Um, oh, there's spring breakers. They're walking by, just <laughs> talking to each other. <laughs> what do you have? Do you have any other questions? Um, no. So, um, there, oh darn it! I had one a second ago, and it just there was something that you talked about the other day with your story. Um, ah, it escaped me. I think we might have been talking about it on the beach this morning. Oh my God. I know what it is. No, well, I know what it is. Okay. Adversity and trials are, can so easily take you away from who you believe and trust that God is. Yeah. Can you speak to that? And I know what you're, one of your honest, I, we briefly touched on that before we started and you, you, you gave a very honest answer. Can you remind your me? Faith. Well, just, I, I was saying about, well, actually, that's two separate questions. Okay. Let me stick with the first one first. What has this journey done to for in your heart about who you feel God is? Did it did it hinder? Did it grow it? I think oh, it grew on it. That. Yeah, it of course grew it. Um, so many people in their anger, which is very justifiable. So I don't. That's yeah, yeah it is want. justifiable, and I don't know. I don't know if everything happens so quickly. I didn't have time to be angry is that strange mm -hmm. no. i don't know um that might come later i don't know we'll see you know there's going to be things that are because this is not done for me yet mm -hmm. um i i am reading and meeting with god every day to hopefully you know bypass that and and that takes you know work and time and um carving up time out of your day, but I just, I totally lost my train of thought. Tell me again. Oh, no. Girl. Um, no, you just, said, you were, I was talking about oh, how you feel about, you know, the, if it changed who you, what you felt, oh, the character it did. of God. Um, did it change the character? In your, in your thoughts. And it, the other question was, you gave the honest answer to is, where are you in your faith journey with this journey of new cancer? And you said, was that when you said you're not you're not sure you're not sure yet? Yeah, because you're still walking it. Yeah, I am. So you have it. faith, but you're. Still... I am going to wake up. There's days that I am going to wake up, or I have my hat off, and I was like, "Oh yeah, that happens." <laughs> That's why yeah. I don't have hair. You yeah, just forgot about... your hair toward me. Yeah, I, now I, got... I kind of forgot about that. Um, I didn't forget, but that's you know being funny. But um, it's 
And it's not trying to sound cliche, but um, I wouldn't change it any other way. I don't want to have cancer. I didn't want to live with it. I don't want to continue to go through it, but um, there's too much beauty that's come out on the other side to not acknowledge that the circumstances happened, but God met me and carried me and taught me and um, humbled me. I don't want to say humbled, like, but I became I it's humbled. Great, yeah. It's a great word because it's him working the stuff out yeah. of us that, you know, is keeping us in this, that, that fight or flight. We have yeah. to do it all ourselves Yeah, when we can't. It's his way of showing us that he will. There's a word I'm trying to think of, not develop, but um, it's like an additive. Not de doesn't develop you, but what am I trying to say? I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but I'm literally trying to get comfortable. <laughs> we probably should have said, here, we're leaning forward together. Uh, develop sanctification? Yeah, that that might be it. That's not, I, I, that's, that's a good, that's not it. I can't think of what it is, but I don't know. Okay. I just lost it. See, that's People my chemo. I told her I have chemo brain and that like, it, it's probably on its way out, but it's, he's growing me like a sunflower. Oh, <laughs> sunflower. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Do you love sunflowers? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I grew them one year and they were beautiful. They were like two stories. They were, we lived in the village and it was almost two stories up in my house. It was a one and done. Now I just buy them. Just buy them. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. Well, we need to plan a wig night, wig out. We're going to wig out together, just hang out, maybe have Erica come over and uh, just play, you know, wig out. I have a wall. I'm more, you can call me Moira. Moira. Moira yeah. from Schitt's Creek. I don't know why it's called that because every time I say it, I'm like, that's <laughs> what know. it's called. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, and I'd be happy to, to okay. show you all my tricks. I've yeah. been doing this for years. So, Thank you. but anyway, I, I appreciate you so much. Unless anybody else has Thank any other advice. questions, of course, this has been wonderful. Um, I'm going to pray. And then if you think of anything else you want to share okay. before we go, Ooh, let me just scooch over here. Yep. I'm actually going to lean on you because I'm on okay. a, on a, on a uh, right. I'm on a slope. Okay. Father God, thank you for this time. Thank you for all that Kim shared. What I love so much. I love to hear somebody walking through their journey and they have hope and trust in you, even despite the circumstances or when they don't, they just don't know what the next minute they just, they're leaning in on you. And that is just such a comfort that she is trusting you in every bit of it for her, for absolute joy that is anchored in you despite the circumstances. I'm praying for any person on the other side of the sprinkle pod that is walking through cancer and they just need a bit of hope that it would come from you, Lord. Maybe it's stumbling on this episode or whatever it is, but we just, I'm just praying over her health and her family and her courage and her oh gosh, ability to see you and the beauty of who you are and not faltering on who she knows your character is. You're a father that loves us so much. You will take care of us. You will comfort us. You will bend down. You will, you will see us. You will hear us. You will scoop us right up. As is so evident in this story. Lord, thank you so much for the beauty that's coming from these ashes of this story because you are the redeemer. Because of this weekend and what you what has happened with your, you know, you sacrificing your son so that we can be brought back to life. The dead places in us that we get to be brought back to life, Lord. Thank you so much so much for what you've done for us. I'm praying over Kim's health journey continued and I'm thanking you in advance for the victory that is in her mind, heart and soul in every single step of this journey, Lord. And while we're at it, I'm praying for every single person on this beach, for every single young person that's here, whether they know you, they don't know you. I'm just praying over whatever might be in their, their hearts if there's any confusion in their hearts, if there's any sadness, if there's any doubt when they leave the speech and the party is over, Lord, I'm just praying that you in your own way that only you could do will ambush their hearts and let them know how beautiful and loved they are. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to do a sprinkle pod and to honor you. We love you. We praise you with such gratitude. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, 5902. Look at, Look at us. We're pros. We're going to do this. We're going to go first, right. My first pod. Cat, what is this? My first live? Yes, your first live. I love this. Okay, well, you know what we're going to do?
I'm going to go hit the buffet. Yeah, we should go. Yeah. People say, hey, Marlo, are you doing any excursions? I'm like, the buffet is mine. <laughs> In the Bible, I'm stealing this from my comedian friend, Kay Dodd. She says, hey, it says in the Bible to buffet your body. Buff it. <laughs> and so we shall. Okay, we're going. Bye. Bye, Bye from Mexico. See you when we're home.